It's not often recognized, but some of the most contentious differences in religion are not between religions, but they're within religious communities. And it was in just such a situation that PCP got involved a number of years ago. An Episcopal diocese was facing a crisis about whether gay and lesbian people would be allowed to be ordained to the priesthood. The communications around this issue had so fractured relationships that churches were splitting and whole congregations were leaving the diocese. The PCP worked with a group of uh, folks on both sides of this issue. And at one point, partisans came to the place where one person turned to another and said, I hate the way you think, but I love you. They went on to do tremendous collaborative work together. So how do we understand the process that goes on that enables this kind of shift to take place? We're influenced by many disciplines. Family therapy, psychology, psychiatry, organization development, theology, dialogue theory, and we could name many more. But all of those understandings have come together and have been woven into our practice and our experience. And we've come to several premises that guide our work and help us to understand how this process of change happens. The first premise is that community is founded on relationship. There's no community without relationship. Everywhere we live, in our cities and towns, our congregations, wherever we are, in order for us to get things done together, we need to be in relationship with each other. And the way that we stay in relationship with each other is through communication. Communication enhances or detracts from relationships, but it's necessary for relationships to happen. And we know from our work and from a communication study that any kind of communication arrangement or structure will invite some things, some ways of relating and talking, and will discourage other things. So we have choices to make. And when we shift the content and process of a communication, we can actually shift the relationships that grow out of that communication. In the Episcopal example, we saw how engaging in structured dialogue changed relationships from enmity to connection, even though perspectives remained the same, that enabled a collaboration to happen in the end. Another premise is that conversations that are difficult or difficult conversations can become stuck and have a self fulfilling, self-perpetuating process that keeps them going over and over again. And if we can shift that communication pattern, we can shift the relationships that are involved in the people that are in the conversation. Prevention reduces the need for intervention. It's much more useful to spend time in the beginning helping people to prepare so that a conflict isn't reenacted in the room, rather than to spend time in the room where people have been re-traumatized by their conflict trying to keep things together. So prevention, focusing on prevention, reduces the need for intervention. When we keep these premises in mind, we can create an environment where changed communication can shift relationships by enhancing understanding and reducing threat that will result in people working collaboratively to solve shared problems.